Tēnā koutou. Um, yes, yes, so kōrere noa rangi taku ingoa, uh, hi uri o hau no Ngāroa hine, uh, arā ko Ngāti Haua, uh, Ngāti Tū, a ko hapu. Um, ai, um, and... I'm I'm Reese Reese Owen. Um, uh, I work at Victoria with uh, with Sydney and with uh, Rere. Um, uh, Sydney's here in spirit, but uh, she left it to the boys. Um, uh, yeah, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> So I thought we'd start off with um, a whakatauki. So whakatauki, uh, or proverb, uh, one of my favourites. Me titiro whakamuri ka hāri whakamua. In order to understand where you are going, you must look to the past. Or, or conversely, you, you, in order to know where you are looking, you must understand the past. So that kind of underpins our approach to to our problem and to our mahi. So this this map behind us shows us the extent of land confiscations in Taranaki. So around about by around about the 1860s, there's just over a million acres of of land that were confiscated. There's a Coming to about 2019, about 70,000 acres were, were given back to Māori, so about 5%. Um, well, yeah, just about 5%. The reason why I'm showing this is because it, it gives us an understanding of, of the kind of context that we're working within, the historical context. So we work with Paraniniki Waitotara, they're a Māori land trust. And they have been tasked with administering the remainder of the, some, well, a good proportion of the remainder of these lands that were given back to Māori. They have a, sh a shareholder register of about 10,000 whānau, and they can contact around about, um, ambitiously we'll say, 30% of their shareholders. Uh, um, there's about $5 million in dividends that are yet to be paid out to, to these missing shareholders. And in addition, if you needed to make any kind of uh, administrative changes to, uh, to the land, you need to have 75% uh, consensus to make, make those changes. So, so our, our problem really is, is, is trying to find people. That's, a, that's, that's the project that we're working on. How do we find people? So in order to kind of figure out how to find people, we needed to figure out how people go missing and, and what it is to be missing. And... Yeah, so that, I guess that's what I mean by the Whakatoki. We must understand where we've been to, to know where we're going. Um. Is it? Oh, hell. Technical difficulties. Oh, there. Gorgeous. Here we are. Here we are. So if you, if you were to go on to Māori Land Online, and search uh, for a landowner. You you go to their website, and it would show a bunch of names. And so, if I did the same for my nana, it will show her Maori name. It will show her English name, her, and then a, and then a combination of those first names with some of her married names. Uh, didn't have TV back in those days, so she she had a few marriages in her time. So a combination of she told me that that's that's not me saying that about her. She 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 said that to me. That's. Um, <coughs> So, over the years, the kind of the, the succession of land, or the, or the the changing of of interest of land from through generations, is, is a flawed process. Uh, but also, when we when we're trying to think about how we reconstruct the past, uh, we have a look at the data, and it's messy. So, if we take into account the six or so different names that represent my nana, then if we look in the data. We, there'll be six or seven different entities that represent the same person. So how do we know which one is which? How do we know who is who? And how do we find people? Um, do you want to go through this? Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to start there? Uh, yeah, let's crack straight on to the... Um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. 
Uh, we, we, um, we, it didn't take us long to realise we were dealing with a very large data set and, um, and we needed to figure out enough of the meaning of the very, very, very rich data that was in there to make sense of, to, to understand. So, just stepping back a moment, we, we're funded by a National Science Challenge and there's kind of an expectation that we do science. Um, <laughs> but we figured that we had to work towards that and we had to start with some data. We didn't want to try and make a, a, a machine or something do what we thought the Paranini Kiwai Totara people um, already had under control. We needed a different approach. So we thought we will help you with the context. And the context is the native land courts, the Maori land court, a very rich and detailed context. So we just harvested it. We harvested the whole thing. All of it. We ended up with a triple store with 30 million triples in it. 100 million now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and with, oh, yeah. Yeah, 100 million. Um, <laughs> that gave us some data. How are we going to go about developing our understanding of what that data is and render it computational so that the real scientists, and, and we, wouldn't, we, we have other people in the team, so that they could get onto the linkages, the, the multiple names of Rere's grandmother, the, the, the occasions that people have come in and out of court over the issues of lands for so long. This is an early attempt. This is a April Fool's Day. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got there. We got there with an ontology called um, CRM CDOC. Uh, CRM is a conceptual reference, model. conceptual reference model, thank you, and CDOC is French, so I won't go there. But, <laughs> but this, this is an ontology, and if you go looking at what people say about it, they will mostly say it's way too complex and don't use it. Um, a big, big, big ups to uh, Rob Sanderson at the Getty for taking the linked art, linked art into that complexity because they needed that complexity and we thought we needed a rich ontology. We just kept working away at it. We would get, get put on the plane, go to um, Taranaki, have our, our idea of what the data meant and what was valuable in it completely blown apart by Adrian yes. And then we would come back and we would get on with re-comprehending our data. And we just hammered away at it. And we, we, were, we were lucky enough to sit with, so Adrian was uh, work, had like 15 years of experience in the Māori Land Court and we were lucky to sit around some whakapapa experts. So what that meant is we were able to kind of fine tune the ontology to, to match what the data landscape was. And the, the, I guess the, the, the bonus of this uh, an ontology like this is, means that we can start to kind of homogenize, well not homogenize, uh, make interoperable uh, disparate data sets. So if we have a data set that is very messy, if we can kind of get some understanding, some kind of base semantic meaning of that huge data set, we can start to use other data sets that talk about the same people, the same entities, and it will hopefully tell us a little bit more and try to connect the dots. Um, the... The next, the next step for this ontology is, is to hopefully localise it because there's some things that, although this international standard is very good at, uh, doesn't really help to explain what, say, uh, interest in Māori land is or identity or stories. So the next step is to localise that and is to, is to find the, the places where we've had to try to retrofit this thing, this, this colossal kind of... Um, ontology uh, onto our data and, and where, 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 can, where can we find the gaps and not having a bit more understanding about 
to Tūrea Māori and uh, about whakapapa and, and how can we kind of use this international standard and, and make a better localised version of it. Um, do you want to go back to you? So, uh, while we were doing all this work, we constantly had in our mind where is the analytics going to fit? How are we going to put Zeta's grandmother back together again? And, um, and, and we had a lot of discussions with Adrian at PKW. We are also talking with um, uh, Marcus and Valerie. Marcus is our um, machine learning Bayesian st stats probabilities guy and Valerie is his student. So we were talking with them and we, we basically had an approach handed to us uh, and that was that we can identify uh, people if we know their brothers or their sisters. So that was the really the crucial insight and it was pretty much Adrian saying well you might have 3,000 names in that list but if you look at the ones who got the same share amount that was probably a division between children. So you don't have to look at 3,000 and in fact it's very awkward because you're scrolling the screen up and down. All the women go go all over the place because their surnames change. The, the men tend to stay in a little tight little group but the women are mostly older women, they're all married, they don't succeed to interests until they're the senior one in the family. So how are we going to find brothers and sisters? And we ended up with a, a triple lock on it. Same minute book reference, same shares, same land block. Now each of those things taken alone might not get you very far. So then we could take our huge data sets and pull them into uh, these, these, these groupings. That's fine, we did that. We got 570,000 odd groups yeah. of, of what we think might be siblings, 570,000, except that we've just discovered that we think we missed out half the data. Yeah. Um, we did actually. Um, we kind of, yeah. More, more we, we are going to have to get back to our, our, our conceptual reference diagram. We've got some things that we sort of missed. 300, well, while all this was going on, we were looking at another source. We had our eye on births, deaths, marriages. We ended up going with births, and we pulled births out of. BDM historical records, um, as many as as um, as DIA would put on a screen for us. Um, we grouped them up. Pre-1920 birth records, we have about 330,000 groups. So there we are. We're celebrating. We've got we've got this. The analytics people are just going to have to solve. That. They've just got one job: give us a probability. How hard can that be? Well, um, I think I think I've, n now now we're catching up. We're we're only two weeks ago now, three weeks ago, we'd done it. Except we needed to know that at least one pair of siblings could be found in historical births, deaths, marriages, and this and what looks like exactly the same pair of siblings we can find in Maryland online. Um, and we had a presentation we were doing. We needed a... We, we were going to New Plymouth, weren't yeah, we? Yeah. We were going to New Plymouth, that's right, to set out our... Um, to tell them what we'd been doing. We needed something. So I turned to um, this. Tefano Harris, if there's any any of you um, who trace your ancestry back to the Harrises in the, in the Hokianga, um, 
Oh, it'd be nice to, nice to see you. Oh. Almost certainly. Almost certainly. Um, so if we can just roll a slide on, we'll take you really, really quickly through. So that's, that's the book. Elena is my mother's mother. Um, the, the twink is um, mum. And the um, ball, blue ballpoint, the pencil is, is me. So rolling straight on ahead, um, that's what, they, that's what, she, there's two of her. I, there's a story there, but I have no idea what it is. But sh she is at least there once in births, deaths, marriages. And rolling on, um, she is there in our, one of our groups. We pick one out of 330,000 and there she, there she is. And those are her brothers and sisters according to births, deaths, marriages. Rolling on, there she is. There she is in Maryland Online. A court reference, a minute book reference, hallelujah. Many of them don't have that, but this one does. Shares and a land block. And it's, of course, it's, it's on the, um, the, it's on Motorcracker Road, of course. Our group, we found her brother. We've also found her maiden and married name, but we found her brother. So that, that was, was um, a very, a very nice moment. And, um, and now, uh, we didn't write this. Um, n none of you, none of you are allowed to leave. This is mathematics. Um, this is Marcus and Valerie and where their thinking is at the moment. So their, their job, it's one job is to just put a probability on that. And that means that they need to build a model for how names change and why it might be not quite, not quite recorded the same. And all of that uh, theoretical machinery we are going to turn it into running, running on the whole thing. Um, and we have the um, national e-science infrastructure to give us a bit of a, do, do some heavy lifting there yeah. for that. We've got some big toys. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Um, yeah, what, what was really interesting with the, the birth records is that we, we can only access birth records that are over births that were registered over 100 years ago. And so you'd think, oh, well, if you're looking for current owners and land, then the, the, you know, you're gonna, it's not gonna work. However, as we can find, I mean, Reese is, he's, yes, he's a young man, but his grandmother um, is still a, considered a current owner in Māori Land Online, so who, and she was born at the turn of the century? Yeah. Um, and and my, my great-grandfather, Rangi, he was born in 1911, and he's still considered a current owner. There's been two generations of people that should be, should have succeeded him by then, but it, but I guess it highlights the kind of the actual fracturing of Fano because you need to get people at the table to go to court to, to, to go walk through these processes to 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 talk about what do we do with this land. Um, so this is like my little slice of heaven, um, South Taranaki. This, this photo is just taken just down the road from the Utapa, where my uh, great-grandmother and my great-grandfather are buried. And they were both shareholders of PKW as, as, as well, and sh so shareholders of Māori land. So I guess bring it back down to some version of Earth. Um, what it really means is, is it means that there are 70% there are of, this, of this register of 70,000 plus people that can't be contacted. What it really means is they, they, they are unaware of where they connect or how they connect. That they perhaps don't want to be connected to. Uh, but I like to think about the, uh, the other side of it is there's a lot of opportunity in this project and this mahi is, is seeing who can we find 
and how can we help them reconnect back to land? And, the, and then and through um, rebuilding these, these kind of structures of whakapapa, helping them understand how they connect to land. Um, help, helping them figure out what is this place that they fuck up back to and um, why is it important for them. So, um, we're not doing this alone, as Reese said. Uh, we've got some, got some other um, bright and beautiful um, faces here. And I just want something to note as well that it's quite a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we have uh, backgrounds and kind of all things all over the place: information management, political science, law. Uh, that that kind of interdisciplinarity uh, means that we are, are trying to t tackle a problem with a kind of a holistic view, because data science and tech is only going to get you so far. A, a problem that is not tech at, at, at its core is, is not going to is going to need more than just tech to solve the problem. Um, yeah. Me? Yeah. That's us. We have a white us anyone knows the headache to me, it's the second verse, you can stand up and join in. All the welcome, all the welcome. <coughs> Questions. If anyone's got, if there's a couple of people that have any burning questions, I have a mic, so I will bring you the mic. I can hear you from here. Oh yeah, oh, no, oh, I've got a loud voice. There you go. <laughs> Kia ora, um, I'm Jane from the University of Waikato, and we have a lot of Maori land um, court minute books there. I was just wondering, is this something that could be used in other areas at some stage? Um, you'd obviously have to go out and see the iwi and get that information from them, but uh, we have a lot of um, people coming in inquiring. So, yeah, what's the prospects with it further on? Uh, we're, 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 we're relying very much on our um, collaborators, Paranahiki Waitotara, uh, and and we're really wanting to land a bit of a fish before we start um, saying how nice it is. But um, but uh, but at at this stage, what we're doing, what we've done, is we believe with publicly available data. So those data sets that we're working with are Crown data sets and uh, so at least this exploration that we're doing at the moment we would see hopefully as if it's successful as as rolling out quite widely uh, the 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 work that we're looking to get started with Pananihiki Waitotara uh, sooner rather than later is actually to use other resources like like this and uh, to to um, tell us what's working and more importantly who didn't get found out of the the um, the, the the data harvesting the data munging the data rearranging and the analytics and the assignment of probabilities so the the the, the we're looking to work initially in um, having having an ability to uh, fully assess what uh, what what we're trying to do, and hopefully then at that point it's really 
uh, I would hope um, good to go. Just something to add as well. Um, we will, we we're re keeping the engagement in with with the community that we're working with. So uh, it's, uh, we people like Adrian and, and, and Mitchell Ditai, uh, and that are actually based in, in Taranaki, based in the community. They have rapport with the community. It's up to them to be the outreach. We can just give them as much information or as much matauranga as we can. But it's really we're living in their hands, which I think is the right thing to do because, um, as we all know, relationships take years to build and can break in a second. So it shouldn't be from uh, some freaky data people in Wellington. It should be it should be on the ground. It should be um, komato. It should be at the marae level. Um, yeah. Any further questions? One more. Oh no, you've got a big voice, you'll be fine. <laughs> Kia ora to both of you. Um, Kia ora. Just a couple of comments really, um, that I really enjoy or like the way that you're working both on the level of looking at that model and kind of extending and possibly depending on how the work goes, maybe decolonizing a little bit that that international model um, and engaging with that complexity and seeing it as an opportunity rather than oh nah yeah. too hard um, but also the way that it is relationship based and led and that seems to me to be a really exciting way forward with using those skills of um, that the university communities have but being led by um, PKW in this place and in this case and, and the relationships with that. So just a mahi to both of you. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, we've got a, I think that's a good place to wrap us up. Um Homai te Pakipaki Tino Fakahida Hida Mungakai Kurido Thank you again. <laughs>